Christ, this is applicable to us, that we are living stones, that we are kings and priests, um, that we are uh, called to be holy, that we are um, his own special people, a chosen generation, we are chosen and to proclaim the praises of him, to proclaim the attributes of him. And uh, let's, so let's, uh, let's just pray on these lines and, uh, and let's uh, take some time to proclaim his praises, right? Give, uh, declare his attributes. Let's pray. Father, we, we just want to thank you, Lord, for uh, who we have become or who we, you have called us to be in Christ. Father, we thank you that um, you have chosen us, that you've called us. Lord, you have elevated us to that position of being kings and priests. We are a royal priesthood. Lord, I thank you that you've called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. Father, we thank you for that transition. We thank you for that change, God. We thank you that, uh, Lord, we don't have to be in darkness. You've called us, you've brought us out, out of darkness into your marvelous light, O oh God. And, and we can choose to live in that marvelous light, O oh God. We can choose to, Lord, have our beings, Lord, conduct our life, Lord, in that marvelous light. And with that understanding, Lord, that you give us, Lord, and with that enlightenment that you give us, O oh God, we thank you. And uh, Father God, we thank you that you've called us to declare your praises, Lord, share your attributes, God, proclaim your virtues. And Father God, we, we choose to do that, Lord, through our lives, through our act, through our actions, through our words. Lord, I pray that um, you will enable us to do that, God. Let's just take, let's take some time to, you know, proclaim his attributes, to, to declare who he is. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. I thank you that you are our redeemer, the one who build, brings us back. The one who picks us up from where we are fallen and the one who takes us beyond where we have fallen, elevates us beyond that. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you that you are our Redeemer. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Master. Oh, we proclaim your praise. Lord, we thank you that we can completely trust in you. Lord, you are our sure foundation. And uh, we thank you that, um, God, with you, it's not a mixture of truth and lies or light and darkness. God, but God, with you, it's, it's holiness through and through. It's righteousness through and through. And you are truth itself. Father, we thank you for that, for that assurance, God. And even though we live in a world where there's uh, so much of mixture, where even, uh, even though we live in a world where there's, God, um, God there's so much of... Uh, things mixed, oh God, with culture, God. And uh, Father, we thank you that we can come to you and uh, for discernment, for clarity, because you are the true righteous standard, God. Hallelujah. We declare this morning that you are our reference point. We declare, we proclaim this morning that you are truth itself, God. Hallelujah. We can always turn to you, look to you, God, and receive from you that reference point. Um, just want to want us to go ahead and uh, you know just declare and say, Lord, uh, just ask the Lord to uh, align uh, our, and check and align our our internal point of reference. You know, by that I just mean that you know our sense of right and wrong. You know, uh, if even if it's clouded by you know maybe some unrenewed thinking, even if it's clouded by some. Um, some flesh, work of the flesh, uh, may it come to a place of uh, clarity, or may it come to a place of righteousness, our own internal sense of right and wrong. Um, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would do this. We ask that you would strengthen, Lord, what is right. Strengthen, God. Strengthen that, O oh God. And I just pray that you would highlight, O oh God, um, Lord, your plumb line, your reference point, Father God, uh, of truth, Lord, in us, Lord. Yes, Master, we thank you that it be so apparent and so clear and so strong in us, God, that every other thing, God, that we'll be able to, Lord, immediately check and, Lord, um, just reject, Father God, that we would know. Hallelujah, we thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. 
and uh, we give you all the praise. We thank you for preparing us, Lord, as living stones to build up a spiritual house, God, to offer up spiritual sacrifices, God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you. And this is a big part of our lives. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Awesome. Praise God. Amen. Oops. Amen. Uh, something fell. Okay. Uh, something from my class. Right. So uh, let's continue from where we uh, stopped last class. We looked at, uh, we were looking at focusing on others, right? Um, how to focus on others, how to uh, turn away from self-centeredness. And, and the reason why we are doing that is to be good at winning with people. And we know that leadership is not an isolation, is not uh, devoid of uh, interacting with people. We all know that ministry is uh, you know, serving God and serving people. It's about loving God and loving people. And so um, so since it involves people so much, it's, it's people heavy. Right? So it's best that we learn how to do this uh, and... Uh, and get better, better and better at it, right? Uh, irrespective of how we are uh, temperamentally, that we get better at it, so that we can be um, uh, we can be truly free to be who God has called us to be. Okay, so we're looking at um, we looked at three principles that help us to focus on others. The big picture principle, uh, which uh, where. We are part of it, but we need to look beyond ourselves. Then we looked at the exchange principle where we, if we would put ourselves in other, other person's shoes, you know, we would understand the challenges, understand what the other person is going through. So uh, we need to be able to view things from the other person's perspective. And which means that uh, like sometimes even though we do not agree, um, you know, it's, it's good to observe, it's good to learn why does that person think that way or why does that person act this way? Okay, um, and then we'll also look at the learning principle that, uh, you know, if we would approach um, people or people whom we interact with, uh, if we would have this perspective that I can learn something from this person, right? Uh, I can learn definitely something from this person. Uh, um, even though it could be, it could sometimes, you know, uh, it could even be, uh, what should I not do? You know, uh, it could even be that, but if we would approach, um, uh, with that, um, with that mindset and we have that perspective, then we would, uh, definitely learn ourselves. Right. But at the same time, we would also be able to focus on others, turn the focus from ourselves to the to the other to others right okay so uh, the fourth one uh, we we i think we just got started with that uh, is the charisma principle okay let me just share uh, i'm sure you all have the notes but uh, let me share that okay so the charisma principle so charisma principle is that um, uh, this is a famous quote by dale carnegie who wrote that book, you know, How to Win Friends and Influence People, um, that people don't care how much we know until they know how much we care, obviously, about them, right? Um, in most cases, this is how it is, right? Uh, people don't care how much we know, how much learning we have uh, to offer uh, unless uh, or until they they realize that, okay, this person cares, truly wants me, to um, to benefit from this, right? It's not just to show off the great learning, but um, this person wants to wants me to benefit, wants me to be better um, than how I where I am. Um, so when people understand that that we care, then then they also would warm up. They would also be approachable. Okay, so people are interested in those who are interested in them. Okay. So, which means that um, um, when we interact, when we um, with people, when we um, um, you know, when we um, uh, talk to people, communicate with people, it must be sincere, right? Um, 
Um, okay, here's a question. Is it okay to read books of Dale Carnegie? Um, like, I, I, this is the only book that I've read, uh, Shri Kumar. Uh, any particular reason why you are asking that question? Um, Nothing like that, uh, because uh, he ended, I think so he ended up in killing himself or something. That is something oh, is it? Oh, I, uh, okay, okay. I don't know about his life. Yeah, that is something I heard about him, too. But mm -hmm. I, I read uh, one or two books about him, uh, about, uh, but I just want to know that, because uh, that was when I was not a believer. So, oh. <laughs> the price, is it okay to read those books? Because, oh, I yeah, see. You know, that is a motiva motivational speaker. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, yeah, it would be motivational. It would yeah. be... Uh, I just want to um, know that whether it is good to read or not. Because oh, I see. To, okay. to improve the knowledge, that's, is it okay? That's right. Right. So, so I think, uh, you know, the, we can use this uh, thumb rule that if there is something, uh, I mean, thumb rule to discern and, you know, in whatever content we read, respect to who the author is to see if there is something that contradicts the principles in the word of god uh contradicts the you know the truth in god's word uh and if there's something that contradicts i think we just need to reject that and hold on to what is true uh, yeah uh, kennedy you. did you yeah kennedy did you want to say something i see your unmuted Okay. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, move on, right? Okay, so here are some things that we can practically do. Become genuinely interested in others, right? So, um, so how how do we do that? Um, maybe ask questions, find out about them. There are you know hundred things or more that we can find out about the other person. Uh, and uh, maybe out of, uh, you know, culturally sometimes, it, it we feel it's impolite to ask questions or, uh, you know, certain questions um, should not be asked, right? Um, and that's okay, you know, but I'm sure that there are other questions that we might we can we could ask to find out to be genuine to show that we are genuinely interested in the person and find out learn about the other person right um john c maxwell also talks about you know smiling um to have a smile to not always go about with a very serious and sour face uh, because a smile makes us approachable and then you know he also talks about the fact that um, well, some people can smile naturally, others, for others, it's an effort. And then, you know, there's a humor in, humorous incident he talks about. He says, no, that's not true. Because uh, right from the time we are born, the doctor gives us a slap on the back, on the bottom. And then we come into the world crying. And no wonder we, you know, we don't trust people. Um, but the fact is that, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we can all learn to smile. We can all learn to, you know, shed our insecurities about uh, being approachable because um, now we, we do understand that sometimes um, you know we uh, you know there are uh, there are people who, who feel that okay if if i smile then it's a sign of weakness or if i'm approachable then it's a sign of a weakness right uh, and uh, and i don't want to be approachable or maybe they've been taken for granted uh, i'm not valued uh, so probably that's one reason but then um we can definitely teach others how to treat us right and uh, and definitely smiling is a is a bridge it can make us approachable um and of course remember that we are talking about how to be other focused other person focused okay um uh, some simple things remembering the name of the person of course um yeah, and uh, uh, I'm I'm not sure if it was John Maxwell or someone else who who knew the person you know who would actually go through the database of uh, quite a big congregation, right? And he would make an attempt to remember the names of people. Uh, I mean, I know this sounds a little extreme, but he would do that. Right? This uh, this pastor, I think it is John Maxwell when he had, when he was pastoring the church. I, I'm not too sure, but. Um, you know, to remember the name of the person. Uh, sometimes in our, you know, we, we are thinking about what to tell the person. We are thinking about what to, uh, you know, the what to tell about ourselves. 
uh, and then we we forget the name of the person who be, whom we just met a minute ago, right? And uh, and then we we need to ask them again. Sometimes you know it happens. Uh, we ask them, okay, by the way, I I, I didn't quite catch your name, and uh, you know, at the end of the conversation, you are again asking their name. Nothing wrong in doing that though, but um, you know to remember the person's name is uh, is important. It it helps us again um, to be a good listener, right? To listen to people to to not just hear but listen right to actively listen to take in what they are you know saying to be genuinely interested um, and this would encourage people to talk about themselves right even uh, we might ask the questions but if we are not listening to what their response is, um, is then then it defeats the purpose okay um, we can talk in terms of uh, other person's interests and uh, make the other person feel important and and do this sincerely, you know, not uh, out of flattery, um, right? Okay, so that is the charisma principle. Uh, we're going to look at uh, two more uh, before we, you know, finish this section. The thing is the number ten principle. Okay, um, the number ten principle is. Um, uh, and the confrontation principle, you know, um, uh, seem to be, you know, opposite, uh, but actually it flows together. It's about truth in love or um, love in action, which involves truth, which uh, uh, which includes, you know, uh, truth, which is grounded in truth. So the number 10 principle is to believe the best about people. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, in gymnastics, the perfect score is 10 right um so to believe the best about them is to put a 10 on their lives to say that uh, yes um, you esteem them you know you believe the best about them you trust them so uh, that is the number 10 principle um you know, there are two ways we can approach people guilty until proven innocent or innocent until proven guilty, right? So guilty under, un, until proven innocent would mean that we, we are going to view uh, every action of theirs, every thing that they would say, uh, everything that they would share with suspicion, right? So they are, you know, you, you already we, we label them as guilty, categorize them as being guilty and a lot has to do with how we have maybe some of the experience we've had and that that's heavy on us um so we we say okay they are guilty until proven innocent and it's going to you know take a long time right and a step-by-step -step, uh, process or we can say we can approach people in uh, in this manner where we say okay they are innocent until proven guilty so the number 10 principle is to believe the best that uh, that well whatever god has put in their lives whatever potential they have um, you you believe that they can they can do it that they will be overcomers and they will deliver and uh, and and more often than not believing the best about people uh, brings out the best in them Right. Believing the best about people brings out the best. So, um, so you you tell them that yeah, this is. Uh, I believe you can do that. You know, you you have you know all these abilities, your skills, and uh, so that gives them the confidence, and uh, that uh, takes a lot of pressure off, right? And uh, they'll be able to deliver better, perform better, right? So. Um, uh, the third thing is not to disqualify people uh, based on our personal biases, right? We might have biases, um, and uh, it is it is truly possible. You know, it it, it could be about um, you know about people speaking about a certain language. Um, it, you know, in a in a country like India, you have you know so many states, so many languages, um, so many different cultures. And uh, 
And the thing is, if we have a bad experience with a certain set of people, I mean, over and over again, maybe, and it, it, it is possible to come to a place of saying, okay, all, you know, I'm, I'm a Tamil, Tamilian. Okay, so it's possible to say, okay, all Tamils are like this. This is how they are, right? Um, so it's possible to come to that conclusion, right? And we can have a bias or we can have a bias about, um, people's uh, you know financial standing we can have a uh, bias about people's educational qualifications you know um, we could have a bias you can say oh yeah, all all phds are boring <laughs> boring people I, i'm sure i shared that experience with you where i went to a church and um, <coughs> went to this church and i saw a person who was you know who was wearing this and uh, uh, and uh, he was he was the speaker for that Sunday morning service and and even before he could start to minister you know I had already formed some opinions and had these bias that okay it's going to be boring it's going to be serious it's going to be uh, it's going to be a real waste of time right so but then he started to minister and it was the most refreshing message straight out of scripture from god's heart it was like a refreshing rain that i experienced that morning and you know started repenting right from that minute that this person opened his mouth to share the word so we could have personal biases it is possible but we need to um you know we need to check we need to check ourselves you know why am i not able to put a 10 why am i not able to believe the best about this person um, is it based on a bias or is it based on some of their you know recent performance okay um so one thing that we need to understand is uh, how the lord jesus believed in his disciples right how the lord jesus gave uh, especially you know with with peter we see that the lord restoring him and uh, and the lord commissioning him to take care of of his flock of his sheep to take care of feeding his sheep to take care of taking uh, you know uh, leading his flock uh, and after the manner in which he he let down the lord okay so um, to be able to to be able to do that Right. I think that's true freedom for us, and we are not restricted. We are not bound. Okay, so so does that mean that I can be naive? Does that mean that I can? Okay, so those are questions to ask, and those are things that we can we can talk about. So how can I do this in the right way? Right? How can I do this in the right way? You know, uh, to do this in the right way is to you know when there are signs, when there are um, you know when there are checks or uh, to be discerning and to be to be uh, addressing those with the persons you know when there's a deviation from standard when there is a you know something that is not being upheld okay, you you're believing the best but um when there's something when there's some deviation from you know what is expected to be able to address that you know um so uh, and address that immediately right um so that's something that we need to do okay um okay then the, then the next one is um to be other focus to be to be able to focus on others is also uh something which uh you know which which could sound paradoxical but it's the confrontation principle right to uh and here's a you know very interesting statement right care for people before confronting them okay can we really do that right care for people before confronting them maybe in our own teams maybe in you know the organizations that we lead um can we confront the wrongdoing can we confront the uh, um, maybe the lack of performance maybe um, you know whatever it could be right can we care for them can we confront them with this in mind okay so there's uh, there's a difference right confronting with the intention of 
putting that person down, confronting with the intention of uh, showing them that they are wrong and uh, that they, you know, and that is the only intention. Um, but if we can care for the person and believe the best about the person that when this is pointed out, when then this is sorted, uh, uh, when this is pointed out, when this is, uh, you know, communicated to the person when the person knows that okay this is what it is that we can believe that that the person would change right? the person person would and we need to give them time to change right so um when we confront what we are communicating to the person especially with care when we, are, when we confront them and we do it with honor when we do it with love and with being truthful right and truth hurts right sometimes um when, but when we do that we actually show the person that we care about them right we we are we genuinely care about them right and uh, you know uh we've had many conversations as parents you know parents of a you know of a teenager now she's in her 20 20s um we had many conversations but uh, about things about discipline about coming on time you know so many things about when we took time to explain why you know when we took time to uh, you know to communicate in a manner even though our whole system was revolting you know it's it's something that of the flesh wants to really uh, you know react in anger react with irritation um but when we put to death all those things uh, the things of the flesh and when we um with the intention of caring for the person with the intention of uh, you know uh, wanting that person to to do the right thing to be able to do the right thing and if it's you know to show that it's for their good uh with that in mind when we when we actually communicated we we saw that there was a genuine change right uh, and uh, and so that was that was really effective right so uh, here are some practical steps okay uh, to confront the person only if you care about them so in the sense um now which means that we need to quickly align ourselves okay what if you don't care about that person no question <clears throat> but you need you still need to confront right but at that point you you really don't care that person you know you're maybe a, it's a professional relationship and uh, you know there's no room for error maybe um, and you'll be penalized because you're overseeing so you know what do you do right <clears throat> will this work in such a setting right so those are some questions that we might have um, but the thing is to make that internal check and alignment quickly you know with the lord say god you know i i need to do this i need to help me to do that with love yeah you died for this person you know that's that's always a big um you know big step or that is always a, a great perspective um for us to have um uh, you know the right heart in in dealing with people you know lord you died for this person you died on the cross for this person and that and that changes the whole perspective right um but at the same time we need to be able to confront we need to be able to tell uh, where the person is uh, going wrong or uh, you know what they need to do so confront the person if you care about them if at that point you you don't feel like you care you know in your emotions or you know in your heart uh, make that alignment make that switch right uh, meet as soon as possible uh, don't think that uh, the thing will resolve itself because it will become only worse right um so first seek understanding not necessarily agreement okay the person might have a completely different view why they are doing that uh, but seek to understand seek to understand the issue seek to understand the problem okay um and of course outline what the issue is objectively uh, and encourage a response you know let it not be about okay this is what you're doing so this is what i've decided and uh, this is what you need to do end of the matter you know it's not that but encourage response 
let the person explain why and how uh, and ask questions right and and um, once it has been established that yes there needs to be a change okay um, then agree on how and when these change will happen right so these are some practical steps to um, to be able to confront with people confront people in in a in a righteous manner in a in, a, in an honorable manner right and still be effective uh, okay okay so um, <clears throat> we're just going to uh, uh, kind of pause here and uh, we, we uh, just wanted to discuss about focusing on others okay and um, i thought it would be good if we can take uh, a couple of principles you know one is about uh, um, the number 10 principle okay and uh, and the confrontation principle and talk about it and see how best you can be effective it okay? um, so this is uh, we, we'll we'll split into groups. I've never tried this before, but I'm going to try it now. So we're talk, going to talk about the number ten principle that is esteeming others better than ourselves. Okay. So in the groups, uh, I just wanted us to share some stories about uh, how it went right, how it went wrong, and and why did it work? Why did it not work? Okay. The number ten principle. Is it possible to do that even like practically? Um, and then the second one is to talk about the confrontation. You know, how can I really do this? So just going to learn from each other. And uh, at the end of it, uh, you know, I uh, just want one person from each group to just share, okay, what is it that you discussed about uh, the number 10 principle and the confrontation principle? Okay. Um, okay can we do that? Right. Any uh, any questions before we get into our groups? Okay, okay, fine. So uh, we'll we'll take um, yeah, Kennedy. Uh, how can you have a humble heart? Uh, one second, let me just look at your question. Okay, then how can you have a humble heart and an iron fist confronted by? Hmm. How can you have a humble heart? Um, sorry, can you just um, explain? Are you saying that how can I still be humble and still hold on to my standards? Stubbornly hold on to my standards and expect that standard to be met by others? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's something that we need to learn, right? So even speaking the truth in love is um, something that uh, we we need to learn and uh, and put in practice right to be gracious uh, at the same time you know convey the truth and maybe uh, the truth is that the person has messed up terribly and uh, and uh, to be to be able to convey that truth communicate that truth to the person you know not really sugarcoat that but to but to say it but to communicate that uh, you know that's uh, uh, that's something that we need to do, right? Um, yeah, to really um, um, put to death. I'm just thinking about you know some of those. Um, uh, this is this is about. Uh, I think um, Nikki Cruz talks about it, and also another pastor who worked in um, some of the tough neighborhoods, toughest neighborhoods, where they were dealing with people who were you know um into a lot of violence gang violence uh, with the uh, problem of drugs broken homes and all that and how um you know they were mentoring uh, seeing transformed lives but at the same time um they would you know uh, these people whom they were mentoring were, would go back to the same environment and then being roughed up and being violently assaulted and uh, and how can I give a you know righteous response? You know, that was uh, uh, that was a challenge. Um, so it was uh, it's it's never easy 
right? It's never easy to do that. Uh, and of course, I'm talking about an extreme example, but uh, like, but in day to day, in um, in our day to day exchanges, um, ministry, family, professionally, <laughs> excuse me. Um, this is something that um, uh, that we can learn and that we can grow into because. The, the, the Lord Jesus did that so wonderfully. Um, thinking about uh, you know John chapter four and uh, the experience, uh, you know his conversation with the woman at the well, and also uh, the way he um, the way he even you know uh, uh, healed certain people and uh, and he communicated the communicated the truth. He said you know repent lest a worse thing come upon you. Okay, so he knew, but he and he shared that he didn't hold back uh, when he said, "Go and sin no more." Right? He well, he said, "Okay, I don't condemn you, but hey, this is something that you need to stop doing." Right? So he did that with grace um, and truth, and which is something that God expects us, and we are empowered to do that by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's um, let's quickly get into our we have, yeah thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah thanks Gary. So we'll we'll spend about five minutes. Okay, and we're talking about two things: um, the number ten principle, and uh, just want each person to share within the group, and uh, and then we'll uh, I'll you know call us back. Okay, here we go. Um, Seven rooms. Okay, um, here goes.
Um, I'm sorry, uh, Tayesh, uh, are you still in the main call? Are you in the breakout room at all? I'm just trying to. Okay, um, I think some people dropped off the call. Um, so what really happens when you drop off the call? Are you able to get back into the breakout room? When you get back, it will allow, uh, it will give an option to join back. Oh, okay, okay, fine, fine. Um, so just some feedback, I'm just trying to learn here. So was that time enough to get uh, into the rooms and then discuss or uh, should we have more time for a meaningful discussion? I, I think we needed more time, Pastor, because we, we felt it was like way too quick. Uh, one oh, good it? example uh, from one uh -huh. person and then it was already three minutes and oh. the other person uh, couldn't get a chance to speak. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, okay. So what we can do is um, when we come back after the break, uh, maybe we can we, we can just discuss it, you know, in the main uh, call itself, the main session itself. Uh, all those who uh, and and probably one person from each group could share, but then more can share uh, right here. Right. Okay. So next time we would uh, have more time. Uh, we would assign more time. So I, I, I realized that it took a while to even assign into the groups, right? So we will have more time. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll take a break and then we'll come back at eleven.